Get off the road! All right. Hi, I'm Mike of Mike's Road Trip. On this episode, I feature Prince Edward Island. Also known as PEI, Prince Edward Island is the smallest of the Canadian provinces. However, what it lacks in size, it makes up for in grandeur. Rolling hills, rural towns, and picturesque farms make a PEI road trip unforgettable. PEI is where the land and sea collide at your table in culinary delight. Rich sea life and fertile farmland make a palate-pleasing experience. So come along with me and let me show you around. I made my way to PEI from New Brunswick, driving across the Confederation Bridge, the longest in the world crossing ice-covered water. I was heading north to West Point, but along the way I stopped to check out this interesting corn maze. Without my trusty drone, I would have never have known there was such an intricate design in the shape of a butterfly. Continuing north, I stopped by the historic Notre Dame de Montcarmel Church, which is one of the island's oldest. The church towers over this magnificent shoreline backdrop and is home to this graceful graveyard. Continuing farther north, my home for the evening was the West Point Lighthouse. Now this was my first time ever staying in a lighthouse, and I was really excited by the location, right on this wonderful stretch of beach. The next morning I headed along the coast to the very northern tip of PEI, known simply as North Cape. Well, I just made it to the northwest point of Prince Edward Island, also known as North Cape. And this is Canada's National Laboratory for Wind Energy. So right behind me is one of the blades of the turbine, which I just counted it out. This thing's about 130 feet long, longer than a right whale. My next stop of the day was in O'Leary, where I saw what I thought was a massive potato sculpture. There were a ton of cars in the parking lot, so I thought I'd go in to check it out. Sure enough, it was indeed a museum dedicated to the delectable spud. This was something I had never experienced before, and I was more than a bit dubious, but I decided to check it out at any rate. It was actually a pretty interesting display of potato-related machinery and agricultural artifacts. I continued my route south to Victoria-by-the-Sea, where I was looking forward to exploring this storybook village. But the weather was not favorable, so I didn't stay long. I decided to just head to Charlottetown where I would call it a night. The next three nights I would call the Great George Hotel home. Built back in the mid-1800s, the Great George is unlike any historic hotel I've ever stayed. The property is not a single structure, but rather a compound of old homes clustered together to make up an overall hotel. The Great George also doesn't feel like a hotel, but rather a large intimate inn. The accommodations are quite spacious with vibrant furnishings and modern subtleties throughout. The Great George Hotel made the perfect home base to explore the PEI capital city of Charlottetown and the surrounding areas. On PEI, it's all about farm fresh food. So I headed to New London to check out a place called the Table Culinary Studio. A stupendous experience that provides visitors an opportunity to learn where and how local foods are grown and harvested while also discovering how to blend these locally sourced ingredients into a masterful meal. Essentially, the Table Culinary Studio showcases an experiential agro-tourism workshop that delights the Epicurean. After my delicious meal at the table, I went off exploring. My first pit stop was to take a photo of this scene at French River. Then I was off to the Cape Tryon Lighthouse, where the views were simply breathtaking. I particularly enjoyed the coastal trail along the edge of the cliff, which allows for a number of different vantage points. 
My next stop of the day was to Green Gables, a heritage place that inspired Lucy Maud Montgomery to write the novel Anne of Green Gables. While I was there, I couldn't miss a chance to walk through the haunted woods, a scene from the novel. Later that afternoon, I had plans to go kayaking in the fishing village of Rustico Bay, but the winds were blowing and gusting so much that I really didn't think it would be much fun. After exploring the village a bit, I happened to notice something on the beach that interested me. As I got closer, I noticed a guy setting up his kiteboard. And at first I thought, well this guy's got to be nuts because it is much too windy. But to my surprise, this gentleman was an expert and really put on a spectacle of a show. The next morning was glorious. So for the past couple of days, I have been exploring the countryside of PEI, but now I'm in Charlottetown, and the contrast is quite dramatic with these beautiful historic buildings, a scenic boardwalk, and of course, many fantastic restaurants. And there's no better way to explore the town than on a bike. The winds had died down, and it was a perfect day to explore Charlottetown. I really enjoyed my time in Charlottetown, but there was still so much of PEI to explore. So tonight, I'm at the Taste of Georgetown, a food and entertainment festival that celebrates authentic PEI cuisine from the land and sea. With live entertainment and fantastically prepared food by a couple of celebrity chefs, the Taste of Georgetown was an event that really showcased the vibrancy of PEI cuisine. The next morning, the birds were chirping and the sun was shining bright. I strolled around Georgetown a bit, finding the McDonald Memorial Gardens a particularly beautiful place to spend some time. It was so nice out that I decided I needed to drive back to Greenwich PEI National Park. When I arrived and started walking down the trail toward the beach, I was so glad I had. I was absolutely enamored by this area, from the scenic walking trail to the massive floating boardwalk to the fabulous beaches. This is an area I could have spent the rest of the day. I was in heaven. The beauty was so awe-inspiring and the setting so peaceful. My last stop of the day was also quite memorable. I made my way to the Point Prim Lighthouse, which would end up being one of my favorite lighthouses I saw during the entire road trip around PEI. It was well past lunch, so I was quite famished. Right near the lighthouse is the Point Prim Chowder House, the only place around to eat. And I must admit, I didn't have high expectations since it was near a tourist attraction and the only place around. However, to my utter delight, it turned out to be a fantastic meal and the outdoor seating right on the water's edge made it even more memorable. My last stop of the day was toward Wood Islands to catch the ferry to Nova Scotia. Well, that's it from Prince Edward Island. If you'd like to do a similar road trip, click the link below in the description box. And please be sure to hit the subscribe button for more road trip travel videos. So until next time, we'll see you on the road.